The new Huawei Watch 4 Pro and Watch 4 have been released, and with those smartwatches, Huawei has incredibly stepped up their game. And after using them for two weeks, I can truly say, those are my favorite smartwatches so far. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet, and welcome to my comparison review of the Huawei Watch 4 Pro and Watch 4. Alright, so let's quickly sum up what's new before we dive in on the hands-on experience. Now first of all, a new design. The Huawei Watch 4 Pro features the first aerospace grade titanium case and it comes with a spherical sapphire glass on the watch dial. It also comes with a 1.5 inch LTPO panel and gets as low as 1Hz for the always on display. The Huawei Watch 4 comes with a stainless steel case design with 3D curved glass and is also equipped with a 1.5 inch LTPO display. The Watch 4 series comes with medical grade ECG and 8 channel optical heart rate sensor with TrueScene 5.0 Plus heart rate monitoring capability. It provides accurate monitoring of heart health indicators such as arrhythmia, cardiac rhythm and pulse pattern. Of course, there are again over 100 workout modes included, so you can track basically everything. And I even used it for motorbiking to see my route on GPS and also have a speedometer on the watch with additional data, which is really cool. And of course, the watches are again waterproof up to 30 meters for freediving with a 5 ATM waterproof IP68 rating. The Watch 4 series uses the health glance function that uses quick multiple health indicators to measure various health data items at the same time. These include ECG, heart rate, SpO2, arterial stiffness detection, stress levels, skin temperature and even lung function. The whole process takes around 60 seconds and based on the readings, a health glance will be generated that is comprehensive enough for users to get a better understanding of their health status. Now you can even share that report or print it as part of your personal health management. Now even though it's not a medical device, it gives you plenty of data that is really quite accurate. The whole UI has also been reworked on the watch and in Huawei Health to easily see the data and understand it. There's also upgraded eSIM support, which supports standalone communication to let you make calls and send messages without the need of a smartphone. As well, it also works to download apps, pay, use navigation and maps, and even stream music. And of course, Wi-Fi is also on board, as well as Bluetooth support to connect earbuds like the Freebuds 5. It features now Dual Core Architecture 2.0 that provides users with standard mode capabilities and also ultra-long battery life mode. Now the Huawei Watch 4 Pro can get up to 4.5 days of battery life and the Watch 4 around 3 days. For longer trips you can switch to the ultra long mode which gives you up to 21 days on the Pro and 14 days on the Watch 4. In this mode the experience is the same and you can still fully utilize the features such as sport mode and health monitoring, but without the eSIM connectivity that uses most of the power. The Watch 4 Pro takes around 90 minutes to charge, the Watch 4 around 60 minutes, but 15 minutes of charge will give you a day of use due to the fast supercharging. There's also a speaker and a microphone on board and the customizable button can be software configured and the crown is rotatable with smooth haptic feedback. But the biggest wow is the new software. Now Harmon US has really improved a lot with plenty of smooth animated watch faces, animations, functions, apps and much more. So let's get to the hands-on experience so I can show you all the features. Well guys, it's now time for the hands-on experience and I'm pretty excited as both of the watches are really amazing smartwatches. So let's have a closer look. Now when you buy the watch, the Watch 4, the Watch 4 Pro, you will get it here in the retail box and inside of the box you will find um, the charger and it's a fast charger. So as you can see, five to nine volts, two amps. So that's 18 watts of total power maximum and it's magnetic as you can see so attaches here to the back end. It's also pretty strong and the charging time is really fast. Now 90 minutes on the Watch 4 Pro, 200%, 60 minutes on the Watch 4 and this gives you quite a lot of battery life as well. All right, um, inside of the Watch 4 Pro, as it's a titanium band, um, you can adjust it. And also, as you can see, there are several parts for the band included. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six or more extra um, parts. And what's really amazing about the Watch 4 Pro is that you can remove the strap so easily. All you do is just press and pull. So let me just do it with this finger, it's easier and it's gone. And here also on the other side, as you can see, just press and pull and 
the titanium strap is removed. So it's really easy to remove it and attach it. And if you want to take out single pieces, as you can see, you can do it like this. This is also super easy. And the strap is also titanium. As you can see, the fastener um, closes really smooth and it's also quite comfortable to wear. Now guys, let's do a quick comparison of the case of the watches, so of the body. Now there is a difference between the Watch 4 and the Watch 4 Pro in terms of the materials used. So on the Watch 4 Pro we have aerospace grade titanium alloy which is really hard, it's super scratch resistant and it has this amazing polished look as you can see. There's also quite of a weight difference, but not really in terms of the actual size of the smartwatch because the Watch 4 Pro is a 48mm watch, the Watch 4 is a 46mm watch, but um, we have different batteries in in inside. So we have 790 milliamp hours in the Watch 4 Pro and 530 in the Watch 4. So that makes the Watch 4 case, as you can see, definitely a lot slimmer than the watch 4 pro so it's only 10.9 millimeters on the watch 4 and it weighs only 48 grams so it's a really light smartwatch. now here comes the actual difference so if you're really a lot into outdoor sports and you have tiny wrists the watch 4 is definitely the better choice because it's such an amazing smartwatch, has all the functionality also still great battery life but when you're doing sports you barely notice wearing a smartwatch with those kind of features because it's very lightweight with the silicon strap as well the titanium version is an amazing smartwatch but it's a bit more bulky it also has this curved glass sapphire glass um, screen as you can see so um, the screen on the watch 4 is more like flat but it's also sapphire glass very scratch resistant and overall this smartwatch is something i would take on a date on a business meeting but of course with a different strap i would also use it for sports but for if i would only use it for sports tracking then i would more go with the huawei watch 4 but the watch 4 pro is also available with a brown leather strap and of course you can just attach any strap you want to it um, which fits here in this titanium body as you can see both smartwatches however feature the same button layout so both have a rotatable crown on the watch 4 pro it's a little bit bigger crown they both have the customizable down button which is also the electrode for the ecg function and both have a speaker here on the right side so here a little bit less visible on the watch 4 while here you can see the grill perfectly from the watch 4 pro on the other side both are flush as you can see and both also have the huawei true scene 5.0 plus sensor which is really one of the industry leading features for fitness tracking now one of the highlights about the huawei watch 4 series doesn't matter if it's the watch 4 or the watch 4 pro they have a 1.5 inch ltpo screen now ltpo stands for low temperature polycrystalline oxide and um, the advantage of the screen is that it can change the refresh rate down to one hertz so if you don't need a high refresh rate it will just go down this is for instance very useful for the always on display and with a lower refresh rate you really get a better power consumption and you can save battery life so this also gives you that amazing battery life you are used to from Huawei smartwatches. Now some people also asked me isn't the curved glass on top a bit weird and you actually barely notice it. Now of course you can see it here a little bit basically um, you feel it when you swipe over with your finger but it's not that much curved so just a little bit and it gives it a really nice look. And of course guys it wouldn't be a tech magnet review without a proper durability test. So sapphire glass on top as you can see I can just stab it with my screwdriver and you actually won't see any scratches. Sometimes you see something that looks like a scratch but once you wipe over it it's actually gone. So I bumped this smartwatch into many things into doors um, the table into some tools while working but they are super robust so sapphire glass on top is amazing the same goes for the titanium body here i have a scalpel and even if i try to scratch it as you can see this is really super hard you definitely see something here but once you wipe over it it's actually gone. So Huawei smartwatches have a big advantage compared to other smartwatches and that are the materials used. So we really have your top great materials and even if you drop the smartwatch or if you bump into something you rarely get any damage on it now let's get to the interesting part and this is the user interface and as it's the same on the watch 4 and the watch 4 pro i'll show you everything on the watch 4 pro 
Well, um, Huawei has reworked the whole UI, new transitions, new watch faces, and it's just looking beautiful. And one new thing, actually, the Planet Quest watch faces. And as you can see, if I rotate the crown, it shows the time zones here, and it's pretty cool. Also here, there's a custom button. If you press it, for instance, it's now set to show the weather, as you can see. And if you want to customize the watch face, you can just tap and hold, and you can swipe through different watch faces. But of course, you can also download different ones in Huawei Health, as we'll show you a bit later. Most of the watch faces are also customizable, like on the Planet um, Quest watch faces, there are eight different um, planets, as you can see. So you can choose a different planet or it switch will, will switch between the planets after one day is over. So it's pretty amazing. And also you can customize, for instance, here that button here to something else like moon phase, weather, or whatever you want to. So really beautiful looking UI. Once you swipe to the left, um, you will get here some tabs like um, media playback or heater weather, which you can also customize. But also you have the voice assistant, so Celia, and we can just say, um, set a timer for five minutes. And the voice assistant is okay, now... timer set to five minutes. And the voice assistant is now working really good. And also it's a native English speaker voice assistant, so it sounds also pretty good. And it's working really fine, so also voice commands or typing via voice works really good. So Huawei really worked a lot on that. And the microphones of the watches are here on the left side. Now, as you can see, there was just a notification coming in. So notifications have been reworked and they work extremely well. So now I get notifications from all my apps. I will show you that later on the Watch 4. Then um, here you have a sum up of your daily activity. Here, as you can see, also another health overview of one look. You can see several things here. Once you swipe down from the top, you will get all the quick toggles, as you know. There is Wi-Fi on board. You can also trigger the ultra long battery life and you can drain water if the smartwatch got wet and all those things. But also this is customizable. So if you want to have different quick toggles in there, if you want to remove some, if you want to add some, you can do that all here. Now the down button here, it's also new. Now this opens up this pop-up um, menu, which is also customizable. And here you have quick access to apps um, you will actually put in there. And as you can see, if you swipe through them, you can rearrange it. So it's pretty amazing. Now it's time to talk about the main menu right over here. And it is too much to show you all the apps in there because Huawei has really stepped up the game with app support, as you will see a bit later, because in there you have the Huawei app gallery. Now the app gallery, just on the, like on the phone, um, is here to install apps. Of course, not the same apps like on the phone, but um, it has really improved. So you have many, many apps in there. If you go here to show more, then it will show you a bunch of apps that you can now install on the smartwatch. There are many calculators in there for some reason, but also um, there are really useful things in there like a speedometer to use on the motorbike, which I'm using, radar warning, there's e-sound to stream music, which is pretty cool. So you can leave your phone at home, stream music through the free service of e-sound. The speedometer I'm also using for my motorbike rides. There is messengers, there is little games and also smart home functionality. Adidas running is also supported. There's, for instance, Nuki included, which I use um, to open my door because I have a Nuki smart lock and many other things. So it's really cool that Huawei is implementing more and more apps on the smartwatch, which is really amazing in terms of functionality, especially also for quick smart home usage. Now, in the settings here, you will find everything about connectivity. So I'm logged in with my Huawei account. Um, the watch supports Wi-Fi, so you can use it to download apps. You have Bluetooth connectivity, of course, to also connect Huawei FreeBuds or any other kind of earbuds. As you can see, my FreeBuds 5 are in here, so I can just connect them to the watch and use it to stream music and leave my phone completely at home. There's, of course, mobile network because the watch supports eSIM. And when you're on this screen, you can add the eSIM and you just finish um, the setup in Huawei Health, so on the app on your phone. Now, eSIM is really draining um, quite a lot of power. So if you're using really eSIM functionality, you're looking at around three, three and a half days of battery life. So if you want to have more battery life, you can just not use an eSIM. Of course, you will have less functionality standalone, but also a longer battery life. 
Then of course there's plenty of customization and also there's an always on display. Of course always on display means less battery life but due to the LTPO panel you're still getting a really great battery life and as you can see the always on display looks really beautiful but as I've said it's also customizable and um, many many other things in here. Then there is sound and vibration because the watch supports a speaker. Of course, you can have ringtones on the watch, but also vibration. And you can also um, turn off here the haptic feedback if you want to. And something that's really important is that you can adjust the vibration strength. Especially for me, I use it as an alarm clock to wake up in the morning and I need a pretty strong vibration to wake up. And on strong, this is really strong. All right, um, that's basically most of the things you can do here um, in the settings. Also, there's Huawei Assistant, Wallet, and you can do software updates directly on the smartwatch because you can connect it over Wi-Fi and it can do the software updates right over here. That's also pretty con convenient. And as you can see, it is running Harmony OS. Now, if you follow me for a longer time, you might know that I reviewed every single Huawei smartwatch and some people always commented, but yeah, the notifications are not that good, but this is actually long gone, especially now with the Watch 4 and Watch 4 Pro, the notification management is really good. Now you can customize all the notifications, so from which apps you want to get notifications in Huawei Health. And as you can see, there is WhatsApp, there is TikTok, there is Telegram. So I get notifications from basically everything I have set up. And guys, finally, you can also reply to messages and not only with emojis. So I'll quickly show you that. Um, here we have the notifications, as you can see. And um, a friend just sent me a message before on Telegram and I can open it up here to read the messages and um, hear also the conversation. And if I want to reply to a message, I just tap on the message and down here there are quick replies like, okay, thanks, you know, all those basic things. But here's also the keyboard input and you can use, for instance, either the keyboard, which is unfortunately a little bit small. So for me, it's a bit painful to write. So I prefer the voice input. And if we go back here, I will show you that quickly. Thanks for the information. I got it and let's talk later. So once you have recorded your message, you can actually check it and then just send it by um, pressing the tick. And this works incredibly good and now it's really nice to reply to messages. I think it will also be nice to send voice messages, but right now it's like speech to text, but I see that coming in within the next updates. So that's how you can easily reply to messages. So notifications are working really, really good. Now what's also pretty cool is that both of the watches have built-in GPS and eSIM support. That's why you can use pedal maps on the watch directly. So you have full map support. You can see me here on the map. And if I want to navigate somewhere, I can actually search here, for instance, for the next shopping mall, which is the G3. So just tap it and then start the navigation from here. So map support and also navigating back is a really cool feature on Huawei smartwatches as well. And of course, there are also games for the watches. So you can install little games. There is Tic-Tac-Toe. There are really many apps now in the Huawei app gallery. Then talking about the workout modes, well, it's over 100 workout modes and you have seen also in my previous videos um, what is in there. There's also diving, but yeah, just keep in mind the watch is only waterproof up to 30 meters. It's not like 100 meters like on the um, Huawei Watch Ultimate. But anyhow, you can use it for pool swimming, diving, whatever. If there's a workout not in there, you can also add here custom workouts and add more here to the plan. Also, there are several settings here to turn off those voice prompts and and you can also um, switch on the always on display for workouts or even there's auto detection of workouts as well. Now for the other health features, well, there is sleep tracking in there, ECG, constant heart rate monitoring, SpO2. It's really a lot to go through and to make this video not too long, I will show you the only new feature and this is um, this health glance right over here. So this measures in 60 seconds some um, important um, health measurements and with that it can generate a report um, based on your health and it's super easy you just press the button you start measuring put your finger on the electrode for the ECG and you will get your report afterwards so this is how it works you just put your finger on the electrode for the ECG and it will start working the ECG takes around 30 seconds and the heart rate measurement on Huawei smartwatches is really really accurate so actually you shouldn't speak during the ECG and do something, but just for testing to show you how it works. 
So now it's doing some other tests. It's measuring the heart rate, um, the blood oxygen and some other things. So this takes also a couple of seconds. And in the last test, you have to cuff into the watch, but actually you can also skip that one. So that's not something you need to do, but it's for respiratory health. And once it's done, you will get your result here and you can see the full report also in the Huawei Health app. All right, so that was the health report, but of course you can see all the data also here in the widget, or you can open up the individual apps to see the statistics and also the constant monitoring. So that is basically um, the overview from the Watch 4 and Watch 4 Pro. And now let's check out Huawei Health to see what has improved. So guys, it's now time to have a closer look at the app. So we're here in Huawei Health and it doesn't matter if you have an Android phone or iOS device or it doesn't matter which Android phone you have. Huawei smartwatches work with all the devices. So on the left, there's an iPhone 14 Pro Max running iOS 17 developer version. On the, on the right, there's a P60 Pro I'm using. So um, Huawei Health has changed a little bit, as you can see. So you now have here your health clubbers, which shows some um, sleep, then also activity here, and also including your mood. And it tells you also if you completed your tasks for, to the, for today. You have here an overview over all your things, like um, your exercise records, then health clubbers before it was activity rings. You can see um, tracking of your heart rate. You have the sleep analyzers, which also shows you deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, awake time. So it's a pretty good um, overview on your health and all the statistics, SpO2, skin temperature measurement. And if you are measuring your blood pressure, you can also put it in the app right over here. Your exercises, you can also see in the next tab, and this is pretty cool. So I like to cycle a lot. And um, the cycles you can actually see here. And if you open up um, a tour, as you can see, then it will load all the data from the GPS. And as you can see, there is no weird chicked lines. So this is exactly the route I've taken. Also here you can see um, I was taking a little bit more right way next to the road and it tracked it really well. So the tracking is really accurate. That's pretty good. And there's also the dynamic tracking. So this gives you an overview of the time, calories, speed, and you can just play back this video here, for instance, also sp sped up, for instance, and it's with some music, it shows an animation, and this you can also share to social media. So I really liked how Huawei Health developed. So you get a complete nice overview over all your data, which is also animated. So you can share it, for instance, on social media with your friends. What's pretty cool in Huawei Health is also that there are kind of courses in there. So as you can see, start, lifestyle, beginner. So you will get some guidance on your sport activities as well. Then there's the devices tab right over here. This is probably the most important one. So here you can also with the Huawei app gallery install um, new apps on on the smartwatch. So if you open up the app gallery, it will actually open up the app gallery here on the phone. And from there you can just push all um, the applications you can see here to the smartwatch. But you also can access the um, app gallery directly on the watch itself. Now that's probably the only difference to the iOS version because on the iOS version, you don't have access here to the app gallery. So if you're using it with an iPhone, you need to download the apps directly on the watch as the app gallery is not in here yet, maybe in the future, but yeah, who knows. Then here we have watch faces so you can download many additional watch faces directly from the store. And if you tap on your device, actually you can do also more things. So you can um, manage the eSIM right over here. So that's what we have talked before. Here you would set up your eSIM if you want to. And also you can access here a few things like um, health monitoring, ECG. But on an Android device, you also have access here, for instance, to manage the music, which is missing here on iOS. So a few little things are different, but in total, there's really not a big difference between using it with an Android device or using it with an iOS device, which is really amazing. And Huawei continues their effort to also um, make Huawei smartwatches fully compatible with iOS. All right, guys, so we're now here at the end of this video, but the main question is which watch to get. So it can be really difficult because Huawei has many models, but if you want eSIM support and mobile internet, basically you should choose now the Huawei Watch 4 or Watch 4 Pro. If you're just using it for sports, I would maybe consider the Watch 4 because it's slimmer, it is more lightweight with the silicone strap. If you also like to use the smartwatch in your daily life, if you also want to take it to business meetings, well, maybe the Watch 4 Pro. 
And if you're into diving or crazy outdoor adventures, then the Huawei Watch Ultimate, which is my favorite watch. And this is one of the most amazing smartwatches I've tried in my whole life. And it's, it is waterproof up to 100 meters. So you can even go diving with that watch, no problem. All right, guys, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, as always, it's quite a lot of work to do those comparisons. So I would really appreciate if you leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. As always, guys, big thanks for watching here until the end. I'm curious on your thoughts. So let me know down below. And as always, I'm Stephen from Tech Magnet and I'm signing out. Have a good one.